Several students aim to win the Commonwealth scholarship every year, but only a handful of them get selected. So we thought, why not cover the entire process to applying to the scholarship with the Commonwealth scholar itself? Hi, my name is Priya and if you are planning on applying for the Commonwealth Scholarship next year, this video is going to be your one-step guide. We have Apekshita Varshne, a Commonwealth Scholar, who will be sharing about her journey to winning this scholarship in great detail. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel because it's free, just like our services. Let's get started. My name is Apekshita. I am originally from in and around Mumbai. My family has moved quite a bit and I have a background in journalism, communications, campaigning, uh, so issues related to urban development and social justice. And I did my undergrad from Jai Hind College, Mumbai University, and I finished it uh, back in 2015. So I worked for about eight years. Uh, and I'm continuing to work, but I think at about five or six years in my during my work experience, I decided that I wanted to get a master's mm -hmm. and I wanted to study further. So that's when the journey of figuring out which college to go to, what to study and how to navigate the very complex world of scholarships began for me. Scholarships particularly, there are a number of scholarships that offer complete funding and by complete funding I mean not just the tuition fee but also a monthly stipend for you to sustain yourself in, in another country and I focused particularly on the UK so I can speak about scholarships in the UK. So the UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, the FCDO, has two broad scholarships for Indian students. One is the Chevening Scholarship and the other is the Commonwealth Scholarship. Now both these scholarships cover uh, everything. So this means your visa fees, your airfare to and fro the UK, uh, your tuition gives you a stipend, they cover, they give you a warm clothing allowance, they cover they also give you an additional study grant in the when in the course of the year if you want to attend a conference or if you want to attend additional a program that requires additional funding they give you that they also give you a thesis grant so it's a very generous scholarship you're taken care of in every way and the process to winning the scholarship therefore is extremely complicated and it's extremely competitive to win these scholarships so i won the commonwealth master scholarship now within the commonwealth there are two types of scholarship one is the commonwealth masters and one is the commonwealth shared scholarship so the commonwealth shared scholarship is um, only valid for a few programs so you have to look at which programs fall under the commonwealth shared ambit and you have to see whether the program that you are applying for is eligible and that has a different process what i'll speak about is the commonwealth master scholarship which is uh, a scholarship again like i said it covers every single thing but this scholarship requires a nomination from the ministry of education in india so the way you go about applying to the scholarship is that uh, there are two stages broadly. Actually, before I speak about the stages, let me tell you that there are a few themes that are covered within the scholarship. There are six broad themes. One is science and technology. The other is health systems. The third is global prosperity. Fourth is global peace, security and governance. Fifth is resilience and response to crises. And the sixth is access, inclusion and opportunity. So I, my theme was access, inclusion and opportunity because I was applying for a master's in urban development planning. So that was my theme. So you to sort of start this process, the first step is to apply to the Commonwealth Scholarship Commission's online application system. It's called the OAS and you have to uh, download the form and you have to fill it. And the deadline for this is very early in the academic year, it's, it's October. So if a person starts applying to universities, say in August, September, the f it's almost one of the initial scholarships that you apply to. So you apply to the Commonwealth in October. And then once you've submitted your application, the second step is to apply to the Ministry of Education. And the deadline for that is usually December. So you apply to the Ministry of Education in December. And if you're selected, then the Ministry of, Nom Ministry of Education nominates you. And typically every year, Ministry of Education nominates about 35 to 40 people 
from the country for the scholarship and from those 35 to 40 people about 10 or 12 get selected from the by the commonwealth scholarship so the process is that you apply to the commonwealth then you apply to ministry of education and then if the ministry of education likes you likes your application they will nominate you and then amongst those who are nominated the commonwealth scholarship commission will further select 10 or 12 students so that's the that's the process Okay so for the commonwealth scholarship application you don't need an acceptance but for the ministry of education application you must have an acceptance so by so when you apply to the commonwealth in october you have to you have to have a very thorough understanding of what you want to study why you want to study it what will you do when you come back to india because the application form is quite lengthy and it has multiple questions and it is it's it's a it's a form that requires a lot of thinking and understanding why you want to do something so at the time of filling this form you need to have a lot of understanding of what you want to study and why and then by the time you have to apply to the ministry of education you must have an acceptance so this means that your application journey needs to begin a little early it needs to begin all the it needs to begin like in june or even earlier because to think about recommendation letters etc so in terms of documents that are required uh, it the commonwealth application requires recommendation letters so that's one thing of course you need to have an undergrad degree and you need to have you need to have uh graduated with a good uh percentage or good score uh you don't need any particular documents per se but you need a very good understanding of of your subject and what you want to do and why i'm saying this again is because the questions in the commonwealth scholarship application are questions around development themes so like i told you there are six themes that the commonwealth covers so i can speak about the theme that i applied under so the theme i applied under is access inclusion and opportunity so there were questions around what my development goals are why do i want to study this program what my study outline would be what will i come back and do uh, what will be the you know how will i measure what i do so these are very these are questions that really require a very thorough understanding of the subject and a, and clarity on what you want to study and what you want to do which is why i think more than the documents it's the process of figuring out um uh, your next steps that are that are way more important So like I said you have to after you apply to the ministry they release a list of nominees somewhere in January or early February in my case it was released in January and that's a list of about 38 30, there were 37 I think in my batch and then in I received my scholarship like I got a, got an email from the commonwealth scholarship commission that I've received the scholarship on 1st June so it takes about 3 or 4 months after that at first it's sort of you're notified that you have you have uh, received the scholarship and then it's the process of the university and the scholarship commission together verifying your candidature so they will look at your acceptance letter they will look at your uh, they will sort of fulfill all the obligations that they have on their end so that process goes on uh there are also additional formalities like getting something called a cast document from the university which is then helpful in getting visa etc so that whole process in my case took another 2 months so i think i was notified on june 1st and then the visa process began only later in in sort of mid august start early i think that's number 1 because as i mentioned the deadlines are quite early in the academic year so you have to apply as soon as college applications begin because remember that the ministry of education requires you to have an acceptance letter the second very most important tip is that if you're looking for the scholarship then you have the highest chances of getting the scholarship if you get admission in a top 10 qs ranking college which means that in the uk your uh, potential colleges are oxford cambridge ucl and imperial there are additional marks 
given to those who get admission in these colleges and of course there are marks also for people who come from marginalized backgrounds so do a thorough research of the scholarship i get a lot of uh you know candidates reaching out to me and telling me that they have admission in lsc or so as and unfortunately i have to always tell them that your chances of getting nominated are very low because the ministry of education clearly says that uh you get additional four marks i think two or four marks if you have admission in one of the top 10 colleges so look at the qs world rankings look at the colleges that you're interested in and look at which scholarship is more likely to support those colleges so one is i think purely from a logistical point of view a uh, scholarship research needs to be very thorough the second thing is look very closely at what that scholarship looks for in its candidates so for example if you're looking at achieving scholarship achieving scholarship looks at leadership experience and it looks at um, your leadership journey so far and what you will continue to do similarly the commonwealth scholarship looks a lot more at development goals so you want you should make sure that your answers speak a lot about sustainable development goals about how your proposed study and what you want to come back and do relates to those developments so you have to identify the focus of the scholarship and you have to make sure that your answers cater to that focus as opposed to you talking about something that you want to do which may not necessarily be linked or associated with what the scholarship is so research i think is is very important and and nobody knows these things you have to keep reading and talking to people who won the scholarships to be to be able to understand this so in my case i did not get funding in the first time i applied so i deferred my admission and i got it in the second time so that allowed me a lot more time to research and understand so my most important tip to people is to thoroughly read and research and then again when you're looking at your programs make sure that you really understand what your masters program is what the modules are what is the curriculum who is the faculty and the research your research should be so good that you're able to somewhat imagine that this is what the program will be like and this is what i will gain out of it i think that kind of clarity is what scholarship committees really appreciate when they're reading your answers okay. so i can speak about this for ages but i think broadly these are these are some of the top sort of learning takeaways that i had We hope this video gave you all the necessary information that you need to apply and hopefully win this scholarship. Let us know which other scholarship you would want us to cover next in the comment section below. Make sure you like, share and subscribe to our channel. I'll see you next time.